Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Marvelous Monday. I'm Leslie Watkins. So I hope you had a nice weekend. I actually went to a funeral yesterday and uh, and actually it was really, really nice. It was to honor somebody who was a uh, 80 year old man, a family member and people from all over came to uh, pay their respects. There were family and friends. And it was a wonderful gathering to honor this gentleman's life. And uh, it was because of the pandemic and so many of us hadn't been out and seen each other. It was a chance to uh, get together and, and uh, reminisce and, uh, and just look at the photographs of of a, of a beautiful life and how he touched so many people and it was really kind of wonderful. It's always sad to say goodbye to somebody, but um, but it was it was wonderful thinking about him and sharing our stories with one another. And uh, the my only my biggest regret is that he couldn't have been there to see it, but maybe he did. So we'll never know. Um, but that's what I did this weekend. And now this week is going to be a very busy week for me. I'm going to be um, sending out the invitations to register for the Honey Bee Workshop. So for those who have been following along, get ready for that. There are 10 special deluxe boxes that's all I've got for the for the deluxe option. And if you're somebody who's interested in making journals and uh, and more of an avid paper crafter, you're going to want to get those boxes. They're uh, very filled with all sorts of very useful tools that you're going to want to have. There's going to be special surprise gifts in there, and um, and it's going to help you to follow along with my future journal making workshop. So you're going to want to get one of those if you can. And if you just want to join the class, there will be a option for just the card kit and the projects that we'll be making. And if you're from overseas and you can't get the card kit, there will be a video only option. So in order to get all that information, you're going to want to go to dandeliancottagedesign.com and make sure you're on my list for notes. So you want to subscribe to notes from dandelioncodge.com and you will be notified of all of the information about that coming right up. The other thing I want to talk to you about today is the watercolor card club. So I've made some changes. There's going to be a uh, two options for the watercolor card club. If you only want the video, that's fine. You can you can stay at the regular $25 option. But now there's going to be a new um, option that includes a complete class, materials, practice sheets so that you can follow along with the assignments, and uh, a live Zoom and critique. So um, there are lots of different elements to that. And if you'd like to learn more about that, please do the same thing. Go to dandelioncottagedesign.com, subscribe to Notes from Dandelion Cottage, and I will give you all the information about joining the Watercolor Card Club. And also, at the end of the video today, I will be posting these links underneath so that you can learn more about them. But I'm really, really excited about the new Watercolor Card Club because what I found is that so many of you really want to learn. You really want to go much more in depth and I'm delighted and I'm happy to take you there. So there will be a, that new option for you. Today I'm going to show you something really quick and easy. So um, if you're someone who has never stamped before or maybe you've never watercolored before, um, if you if you hadn't had a chance to take any art classes or um, 
you know, if you've been too busy with, with just life and all the stuff that we have to do and you, and you don't have a lot of time and you just want something that's quick and easy, this is going to be the uh, way to go. So with just a few tools, I've got, I've got a uh, ink pad here. I've got a couple of blocks. These are clear blocks to put the stamps onto. I've got a stamp set. Okay, this is called Eclectic Garden and it's adorable. It's got this cute little bee eater bird. It's got some, um, I think they might be blueberries, some radishes, an artichoke. It's got a couple of splotches and it's got some sentiments. So this is a very cute stamp set and um, something that you could use all year round. And you can do all sorts of different combinations with these stamps. So I'm going to show you one today. These are water painters. These are just paint brushes with a water reservoir in the handle. So these are very handy to have. You can use them to um, when you're when you're going out on location to paint. So for instance, if you're in the car or if you're going to the park or even out on your back deck or porch, these are awesome. This is just a mini palette, and I've just put some ink in here. So this is the, um, the water-based inks that we use to replenish our stamp pa pads. So these are very inexpensive. They're about $3.75 a bottle, I think. They look something like this. All right, so here's a little bottle. So I've just squeezed a couple of drops of this into the palette here. And then I have some paper. So this is a full size sheet of the Fluid 100 watercolor paper and I've just cut that in half. So the full size sheet is five by seven. This half sheet is three and a half by five. I've got a piece of green cardstock here. This happens to be a color called Mossy Meadow, which I like very much. I've got a standard size piece of cardstock here, and this is just a 8.5 by 11 sheet of cardstock that's been cut in half and folded, and that creates a beautiful standard size card like so. And then um, we can put our artwork on the top of it like that. This is a piece of very vanilla cardstock. This is just the standard weight. And I don't, I don't think we're going to be using that today, so I'm just going to put that aside. So off to the side, I've got a little bit of water. And I also have a paper towel. And the first thing I'm going to do is grab my watercolor paper and decide what I'm going to stamp on here. So um, I like this sentiment that says sending bright wishes for a happy day. I like the idea of making a spontaneous card for somebody who's not expecting it. So just something to, um, to send in the mail that is not a birthday or a holiday, but just out of the blue and uh, let somebody know that you're thinking of them. So I think I'm going to go with that. And, I, and I'm going to use this little bird. So these stamps are photopolymer, and that means that they're see-through, which makes it very handy when you're using them with the clear blocks because you can see exactly where your image is going to be on the paper. And they are naturally sticky. You don't have to add anything to them. You just want to make sure that you get that on the block so that it's got enough of a of distance from the edge so that you get a nice impression. And get my sentiment. Get that on there. Okay. 
And for my ink, I've just selected a neutral tone. So this is something called Sahara Sand. And it's a very pale, kind of a beigey, gray looking ink. And I think this is going to, let me, I have to decide now, do I want a horizontal going stamp? And that could be really cute. Or do I want a vertical or a portrait style? I think we're going to go with the landscape this time. So let me zoom you in so you can see better. Okay, and I'm going to begin by just tapping my stamp in the ink, just like so, and get that placed where I want it, give it a little bit of a press, and there's my image, just as easy as that, and then I'm going to go ahead and do my sentiment while I have my ink pad out. Same thing. Make sure I've got this going right side up. And I'm going to put this over in this corner. There we go. So there's my design, and that would be very cute just as it is, but I'm going to take a little bit of ink and I'm going to paint this very simply, just like a coloring book. So let me zoom you out a little bit so you can see my ink here. Now, I'm not even sure which colors I have in here, but I've got, pro I am, they're a little bit hard to see, but this is going to be some kind of a yellow, a red, and this looks like a warm blue over here. So you want to have at least a yellow, red, and a blue. They could be any colors that you like, any colors that happen to coordinate with your project. And I'm just going to grab a little out. And I can see it a little better now against the white background. So I'm just testing to see what colors I have here. So these look like a collection of kind of earthy tone colors, which is great. So I like that. There we go. All right. I've got a little bit of ink on my finger. I'm just going to wipe that away. I'm just checking my comments here. We've got a lot of people watching. Hey, everybody. Oh, my goodness, so many. And from all over the country. I love that so much. So I see California, Michigan. Arizona, okay, good. Well, hello everybody, I'm, I'm so happy to see you. Okay, so let's get our little bird painted and I'll make this as, as big as I can so that you can see. Let's see if I come in a little bit more. There we go. All right, so I'm just, I'm going to give this little bird a, um, a nice warm belly and I'm going to add a little bit of this kind of ruddy chest and then I'm, I'm going to mix these colors together to get a darker tone. I'm going to use that a little too dark. Let's lighten that up a little bit. Let's 
is Wang. There we go. And the beak. This looks like one of those bee eaters to me. There are these wonderful little tropical birds with these long beaks and they actually capture bees. Get his tail. And I'm going to put a very light wash of the same brownish tone on the branch. And then I'm going to go into my green. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to take some yellow. I'm just going to warm up these leaves with a little bit of yellow first. Now, I really like these soft muted palettes. Okay, so this is this this selection of colors is based on earth tones. So I've got some warm and cool colors, not too bright. But if you want to go brighter, you absolutely can do that. And um, and still by mixing your colors, get some very beautiful soft muted colors. So it's all about color mixing. And in the watercolor card club, I'm going to be going into color mixing at length. So the way it's going to work is that each month we're going to have a different lesson. And it could be values or uh, tones, how things are uh, lighter or darker from one another. It could be color mixing. I know a lot of you ask me about color mixing quite a bit. And, um, and I'll be talking about the, the color wheel and primary colors and secondary colors and how to, how to get your complementary colors. Very important. Later, I'll be talking about warm and tool, I'm sorry, warm and cool tones, temperature. And, um, and atmospheric perspective. So there's quite a lot. It's going to be a very comprehensive course. And if you stick with it over, the, over um, six consecutive months, you will also get a gift from me for every six consecutive months that you hang in there. You will receive a little gift. And, um, and over time, you will have a very comprehensive understanding of how to create a convincing picture. So if that's something that sounds good to you, something that where you can begin to learn about this in, in monthly bite-sized pieces, then I really recommend that you sign up, get, get ready for April because that's when we're going to begin with the basics. And um, and I will send you all the information in an email when you sign up for notes from Dandelion Cottage. And you can do that on my website at dandeliancottagedesign.com. So my little bird here is looking pretty good. I want, I want to just deepen some of the tonality here. So I'm going to go back into his chin, give that a little more color. Your edges are very important here. So that's it. That's another lesson. Where, um, where I show you how to, how to vary your edges. And let's see. And 
I'll go back into my leaves, get a little more detail. Okay, so I think I'm just about done here. You can, if you like, you can also go over your paintings with something like the shimmery crystal effects to give, give it a wonderful enamel-like look, which is great for these little tiny ones. You can use your Wink of Stella to add a little bit of shimmer, which is always a lot of fun. I always have a uh, wink, and, wink of Stella right next to me, should I want to do that. And uh, the last thing I want to do here is I'm just using a, um, a darker color, and I'm just going to put in some of the texture of the bird's feathers. I'm going to get his tail. His eye. And that beak. And his feet. There we go. So just like that, you have a beautifully painted handmade card that you can share with someone. And I'm just going to close up my ink so we don't have an incident. Get these out of the way. There we go. Now, um, if you to clean your your stamps, you can just take a soft cloth. So this is this is kind of damp. This is a Stampin' Chamois. And I'm just going to rub that on the surface like so. And that's all there is to it. So there's no virtually no cleanup with this. Very easy. So here's my card. And I'm just going to take a little bit of the liquid glue. This is the multi-purpose liquid glue that is very inexpensive, super convenient, and works great. I'm going to center that. to the top. I'm going to leave a little bit of an extra border on the bottom for this one. And just kind of slide that into place. That glue gives you just a minute of setup time. So you can get your layers exactly where you want them. And then I have, <coughs> excuse me, I have a very important tool over here that has apparently gone missing. <laughs> I think it's in my it's in my journal. So okay, I'm gonna have to dig that out again. I'm looking for my bone folder. Here I've got a different one. I'll use this one instead. Okay, so I'm just giving that a nice burnish. 
And finally, a little more glue on my contrasting mat. This one is Mossy Meadow, which is this beautiful rich green that I like so much. And same thing, get that mounted up on my card front. And there it is. So if you're someone who's new to stamping or to uh, watercolor painting, in this case I used the water-based inks instead of watercolors, but it would be just the same. You could also use watercolor pencils or blenders or markers, whatever you like, and, um, and have a, a great card to send somebody. I have some uh, birthdays coming up this month, so I might be using this for one of my birthday cards. And I know that whoever gets this is going to be very happy to have it. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful week. I will be back here on Wednesday live at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time for Watercolor Wednesday, where I paint you a little watercolor picture. And um, stay well, stay happy, stay creative, and I will see you next time.